Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody on a Thursday morning? Still sleepy? Uh oh. Okay, we gotta perk up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hello, everybody. Good morning. It is 7 o'clock in the Kleachko household on a Thursday morning, and it is October. What's the date today? 24. Uh oh. Somebody's celebrating a birthday today. Huh? No. Well, October 24. Huh? Uh oh, one of your favorite aunties. It's the twenty seventh. Oh, mom's birthday. Oh, sorry, the twenty seventh. Okay, we're we're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How come I have twenty four in my mind? Okay, anyway. Tita no, no, uh, Tita Mariel. Ah, uh, okay, okay then. Okay, well anyway, today is Thursday, and that means, as far as we are concerned this morning, it is what mystery we are going to contemplate on? Luminous! Luminous Mysteries is what we're going to contemplate on in the Rosary today. Luminous Mysteries. And where are we at? We've done the first, we've done the second, now we're doing the third. Luminous Mystery, which is? Proclamation of the Kingdom of God. Okay, proclamation of the kingdom of God. How are we supposed to understand that? <coughs> so again, let's recall the the events in our Lord's life, okay? That lead that led to this mystery today that we are contemplating, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. So we've gone through his baptism, okay? When he submitted himself to John, uh, St. John, his cousin, allowed St. John to baptize him. And then after that, so St. John said, Behold the Lamb of God. That is the Lamb of God. Okay, you got to follow him now. And from then, two of John's own disciples went to follow Jesus. Right, And then Jesus wasn't yet quite uh, ready to uh, get out there and uh, proclaim the gospel <clears throat> when they were invited to a wedding feast. And then Our Lady right, tells him, okay, they have no wine, so, you know, do something about it, right? And Jesus obliges and performs his very first miracle, even while he was not quite maybe ready yet, right? In fact, that's what he told Our Lady, right? My time has not come. You're already asking me for a miracle. Yeah. But anyway, Jesus obliges in obedience to Our Lady. And then when, you know, in between this time and, uh, and um, when Jesus already started proclaiming the gospel, something happened. Herod had been, had been hearing about Jesus. Eh? And at the same time, Herod also had been receiving several reprimands from John the Baptist, who was telling him, hey, you know, it is not lawful for you to take your brother's wife to be your own wife. And you know how the story goes, that uh, uh, Herod had a birthday and then, uh, you know, promised the, the, the daughter um, of, um, what's her name now? Uh, Herod, yes, yeah. Uh, ask me anything and I'll give it to you, even if it will be half of my kingdom. And of course, they asked for the head of John the Baptist, and so John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod. So this was even prior to our Lord really coming out into the open and uh, proclaiming the gospel. But shortly after that beheading, okay, maybe that was the signal to our Lord too that, okay, it's time. It's time. And so our Lord starts going out openly and starts proclaiming the gospel. And his short proclamation goes, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? Repent, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Believe in the gospel. 
Believe in the gospel. Believe in the gospel which I am proclaiming to you. Which is what our Lord meant. Okay? But believing in that gospel <clears throat> presupposes a clean soul. It presupposes openness to receiving the word of God. It means that we have to be properly disposed to receive the word of God. That is why our Lord premises his proclamation by saying, repent. <clears throat> See, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Believe in the gospel. But first you need to repent. Okay? And here I'd like to, I'd like to emphasize again the, the need for confession, the need for contrition, the need for sorrow for sin, in order that our soul becomes well prepared. We weed our soul like the soil that you prepare for planting. Weed it out of all the bad things that are in there, so that when the seed of the gospel, the word of God, falls into that soil, the soil is ready to receive it. It is not like going to be thorny. It's not going to be choked up by thorns. It's not going to be rocky. It's not going to be in any way resistant to the word of God. Okay, So repentance is necessary. That is why even St. John was preaching a baptism of repentance. That was what he was telling uh, the Jews, right? Repent, repent from your sins and be baptized. See? in order to receive the Messiah who is about to come. And so the same message is what our Lord is giving everybody. Repent. Prepare yourselves to receive the gospel by repentance. And that is why we have to give priority. We need to prioritize the act of repentance. And that is why we go to confession very often. And I want to encourage everybody to go to confession frequently in order to really clean the soul, to make it more receptive to the Word of God. Okay? Now, the second thing I want us to imagine as we, as we think about uh, this mystery is that when God, when Jesus came to proclaim the Word of God, to reveal, what was He doing? He was revealing the Godhead to us, who was previously just... Um, just um, so-called revealed by way of the prophets and the kings and the judges of the Old Testament. Okay, It was not really a complete revelation until Jesus Christ himself became incarnate. He was the word that the prophets were talking about. Word because it was only by way of um, uh, passing on the uh, prophecies that uh, God had given the prophets to proclaim. See? But now that word that they were talking about is incarnate. He became man. He is now in the flesh in order that he may reveal himself more fully to us in a manner we could understand, in a manner we could appreciate, in the manner we could comprehend because now we can see him. So when he came to proclaim himself, to proclaim the gospel, he did not say that, oh, this, is, this gospel is only for the intellectuals, only for those who are intelligent, smart, only for those who are uh, rich, only for those who uh, have the means to come to me. Nope. Our Lord came to proclaim the gospel to all people, all Without exception, all people. In fact, he even went more to the poor. Right? Not in order to discriminate from the rich, but perhaps to emphasize the universality of his gospel. That this is really for everybody. Not only for those who have the means to procure it, or hear it, or avail of it, but for everybody. Rich and poor, young and and old, sick or well, okay? it is for everybody. And so we have to be, um, we have to keep this in mind that the gospel is for everybody. 
Now, what does that have to do with us? If the gospel is for everybody, what does that have to do with us? Well, we have been called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We have been called to follow Jesus Christ. Okay? He himself issued that call to his own disciples. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Right? What a beautiful, a beautiful uh, imagery, metaphor that our Lord uses. The, the image of fishing. Right? Because his own disciples, beginning from Peter, were fishermen. That was their profession. That was their trade. That was what they knew how to do. And so our Lord tells them, come, come follow me. And instead of fishing for fish, I will make you fishers of men. Not just fishermen, but fishers of men. You know, our Lord is one of the more, most uh, uh, beautiful poets out there. Okay? His language is very poetic. Okay? And uh, that's what he made the, 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 his disciples do. Fishers of men. And guess what? Guess what? If we are to be Jesus' disciples, then we too ought to be fishers of men. We also, you and I, young or old, have to be fishers of men. We are also called to be apostles. We are also called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody. Now perhaps the question in your mind will be, well, how will I do that? I'm only seven years old. Hey, shall we? <laughs> how am I going to do that? I'm too young. I'm only a teenager. Well, how am I going to do that when I'm uh, already old? I don't have a cane. I don't have any more talk. How will I proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, you know what? We proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ first and foremost by the testimony of our own lives. If we are imitators of Jesus Christ and we live our lives according to the way Jesus wants us to live our lives and other people see that, then that is one way we are proclaiming the gospel. By the testimony of our own lives. Even if sometimes we don't even open our mouth. Just by us mirroring Jesus in our own character in our own behavior, in the way we do things, then we are actually spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So number one manner of proclaiming the gospel as Jesus wanted us to is to live good lives. To live lives that could be examples for other people. See? Sometimes we don't even have to open our mouth just by other people seeing the way we live our lives, we are already proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so our very first task is to be faithful to what Jesus uh, wanted us to do in our lives. To be, to be really mirroring Jesus and reflecting the grace of God in our souls to others so that they might see our good example. Okay, And number two, if you have a way of actively, publicly promoting the gospel, then go ahead and do so. Okay? Go ahead and do so. This broadcast we're doing every morning is one way of doing that. Okay? Of course, uh, for those folks of you listening out there, I am doing this primarily for my own children, to educate my own children. Okay, uh, The primary purpose is for my children. And only secondarily, uh, would it be uh, um, a matter of sharing with you, our friends and uh, family and other people who might one way or another benefit from uh, these broadcasts. Maybe you pick up uh, an idea or two which you can use for your own lives. Or maybe you want to share it with people uh, that you know might uh, need it. Or you might want to share it with your own family, with your own children, so that they too may learn what I'm teaching my own children. Okay? So that's the purpose. But uh, primarily, these broadcasts are meant, these lessons every morning at breakfast are meant for my own children. This is the way I teach my children about the meaning of the gospel. Okay, so if we have a means, then we can proclaim it, right? 
As our Lord says, proclaim it from the rooftops. Okay? Proclaim it from the rooftops. Some of us are given the gift of uh, preaching. Some of us are called to preach like the priests and missionaries and, and nuns who go out preaching. Uh, some of us are in the teaching profession. And therefore, we can and ought to uh, proclaim the gospel of Christ in our teaching. Uh, but even in just living our ordinary lives, with our friends around us, with our co-workers, with our uh, classmates at school, okay? with our neighbors, we are always given opportunities to proclaim the truth, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. And so let us not uh, uh, shy away from this calling, from this vocation, because we, if we are uh, 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 living up to our vocation as apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ, then this is part of what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Now, and, and uh, as uh, John Paul II, whose feast we just commemorated a few days ago, has encouraged us, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Go out there and proclaim the gospel. Be not afraid. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the third uh, idea I want us to understand about proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming the truth, is that this truth we are proclaiming is not ours. It belongs to God. Okay? It belongs to God. All we are doing here is sharing what we have received from God. Our Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. Okay? Freely we have received the gospel. Freely we should give it to others. It is God's truth. It is Jesus' truth. It is not our own. And therefore, our first obligation is to learn that gospel very well. To learn that truth very well. It is an obligation for us to learn it well. Because from nothing, nothing comes. If you don't know the gospel of Jesus Christ and the meaning of the gospel, then there's nothing you can share with others. Okay? And you cannot just go out and wing it. <laughs> That's going to be a disservice to Jesus Christ. That is going to be an insult to Jesus Christ. That's going to be a mockery of your discipleship of Jesus Christ. So the first thing we need to know, we need to do rather, is to know the gospel very well. Know it by heart if you can. Know your catechism very well. And that is why I encourage you to memorize your catechism. Right? You don't just read it and hope that it sticks there. No, you got to memorize. You got to have an active role in really studying the gospels, studying the truths of faith, studying the catechism so that you got something to proclaim, so that you have something to share with other people. Okay? So let us let us keep these things in mind as we contemplate the third luminous mystery of proclamation of the kingdom of God that's it for us folks so I encourage you go out proclaim the gospel okay go out and proclaim the gospel first by your own lives and then by your own preaching and your own testimony and your own speaking of the truth with others have a good day everybody bye bye, bye.